the race to the scoring title last season went as expected. Not only did Kevin Durant take himself and Stephen Curry out of the running by joining the Warriors in free agency, he paved the way for Russell Westbrook to fill his void in Oklahoma City with a league-high 24.0 shots attempts per game. James Harden found himself in a similar situation with the Rockets following the departure of Dwight Howard. Although Howard has never been the offensive threat Durant is, his decision to join the Hawks in free agency was the first step in turning Harden into a full-time point guard in Mark D'Antoni's point guard-friendly system. With those opportunities, Westbrook led the league in scoring with 31.6 points per game, and Harden followed closely behind him with 29.1 points per game. Rounding out the top five were Isaiah Thomas, Anthony Davis, and DeMar DeRozan, each of whom averaged over 27.3 points per game as the go-to scoring options on their respective teams. In wake of the moves made around the league this offseason, we could see a similar shakeup in 2017-18. Westbrook and Harden aren't likely to lead the league in scoring again as they are now joined by all NBA teammates who will take away some of the opportunities they had as number one options last season. Furthermore, Thomas is expected to be out until January as he continues to recover from a hip injury, and Davis will have a full season of sharing a front court with DeMarcus Cousins. The combination could set the table for DeRozan to lead the league in scoring, especially if he's serious about becoming a three-point shooter. But Kyrie Irving might be the greatest threat to climb up the standings and win his first scoring title. There shouldn't be any question about whether Irving has the talent to do so. He didn't lead the Cavaliers in scoring last season, but he finished 11th in the league with 25.2 points per game on 47.3% shooting from the field and 40.1% from the perimeter. Over half of those points came in the pick and roll and isolation and Irving proved to be a versatile scorer both with and without the ball in his hands. Of his seven most used play types, the only one in which he finished below the 70.0 percent Lin scoring efficiency was in transition, and he still scored at a high rate of 1.14 points per possession. It's possible Irving's frequency numbers will look different following one season with the Celtics, particularly in isolation. Whereas Irving was one of the league leaders in isolation scoring last season, only three teams scored less points in isolation than the Celtics. The fact that Irving was so good in those situations means it will likely continue being one of his most used play types. 1.12 points per possession was equivalent to Joe Lembede rolling to the basket, but an increase in other areas could help him become a more efficient all-around scorer. The player Irving is replacing in Boston might be the best indicator of how his game could change. Isaiah Thomas is a similar scorer to Irving in many ways, only he relies less on isolations and more on spot-ups, handoffs and running off screens to generate his points. Those are generally valuable ways to score with Thomas averaging at least 1.06 points per possession in each of those play types last season. For perspective, Irving created an average of 23.2 points per game from his seven most used play types, which accounted for 92.1% of his scoring on the season. If Irving scored as frequently as Thomas did in each of those seven play types, particularly spots up, handoffs and off screens, he would have averaged 2.5 more points per game. The difference would have put Irving behind Anthony Davis 28.0 and ahead of DeMar DeRozan 27.3 with an average of 27.7 points per game as the fifth highest scorer in the league last season. Scoring more frequently in those areas would do another two things for Irving. The first is that it would help him become a more efficient scorer. Irving attempted 0.3 more shots per game than Thomas last season, but Thomas averaged 0.21 more points per shot. Shot selection played a big role in that, as did his ability to get to the free throw line almost twice as often as Irving. Based on how efficient he also was scoring on spot ups, handoffs, and off screens, though, Irving would benefit in similar ways by increasing his volume in those areas. It also means he wouldn't likely have to take significantly more shots to average close to 30.0 points per game. More Thomas says he may never talk to Danny Ainge again. The second is that it would help Irving transition to Brad Stevens' offense. While the Celtics only have four returning players from last season, 
Irving isn't the only playmaker on the roster. Gordon Hayward created 28.6% of his offense as the ball handler in pick and rolls last season, and he ranked in the 87.1 percentile with 0.98 points per possession. Even though Hayward isn't the passer LeBron James is, he has the potent.